God, just look at that. It's wonderful. <laughs> yep. That's a pleasure. And that's a joy. It's good to have a friend. Back in a minute. Okay, guys. So, let's take a couple shots here. We're using indirect aiming. going to leave that like that. Listen, what we're doing is holding the arrow slightly on the right. But what's really going on is we're using our knuckle to aim. Now Horace Ford says some people put little lines on their gloves so they can tell the elevation and some people put pins on their gloves so that they can tell the elevation and then he says and others use their knuckle to aim. Well I'm using my knuckle to aim. That's right. When the arrow is on the shelf you can see it. There's a little space here. Now, there's my knuckle there's my arrow, and this bump on my glove is about the right distance. So, someplace on your hand, there is a space that will line the arrow up parallel. For me, it's there, okay? But for you, it may be there, or uh, a Waring, who was writing in about 1500, said that the right hand should be to the right of the target so he would move it away over here so it just depends on the spine of your arrow but we're not aiming the arrow okay that's the big deal we're not aiming the arrow and what I'm finding is you know how I told you how you can roll your arm and straighten out the arrow well I find even with this if I'm drawing back my arrow will be pointing to the left and as I draw back when it gets back to right here, Horace said four inches, Jerry Hill says six to eight inches. I'm saying here, about seven eighths of the way back, the power in the bow is such that it will straighten you out. So when it gets right back about here, all of a sudden, the arrow just straightens out. And that's when you want to see parallel, right? You're looking here, the arrow is here, and you want to see this eyesight and this arrow is parallel and if they are you'll nail the target anyhow I just took one shot because it was just you know, too nice and anyhow what am I trying to prove you know like I haven't hit the target before anyhow that's what you do boys get out there and practice practice what I say have fun I'll be back in a minute Okay, guys, now this is Horace Ford's book here, okay? And I'm going to read you a, a couple of little inserts into it. Because Horace Ford called using your knuckles a dodge, and he didn't really approve of it. He thought it, if you're going to shoot at 100 or 200 yards, he said, it's hard to aim off your knuckle. Well, I suppose so, Horace, but, you know, I'm only shooting out to 35 yards, and I find it helps. So even though he's mentioning these different ways of shooting and trying to tell us the ones that he prefers, listen to this. Here he writes about a, a Mr. Waring. And uh, Waring uh, confines in his instruction, he says, the archer must not look along the arrow, but direct all the mark or the archer must not look along the arrow, but direct at the mark, and that the mark is to be visible a little to the left of the knuckles. The target is supposed to be left. That means the hand goes to the right. That's like Uncle, um, <laughs> Uncle Howard, you know, on the right. Now, that's what we're in, but here another insert says, Others, again, have contented themselves with making their left hand their guide. 
That's what I'm doing. I'm making my left hand my guide. And here he's saying, uh, uh, people who are teaching, direct the learner to keep his bow hand to the right of the mark, and so many archers aim with one or other of their knuckles. Well, that's what we're doing, right? That's what we're doing. Keeping it to the right and using our knuckle or a position along by the knuckle or there or there or there. Some place along there you will personally find the spot and that's where you put the target in your sight picture right by your knuckle or wherever that spot is. Okay? Anyhow, that's uh, it was important enough for uh, Horace to mention it so I'm mentioning it. Anyhow, let's go do some more shooting. Okay guys, let's take a couple shots here. shots. You know guys, something that I do these days is what I call the English cantra. Now look, at when I'm shooting, I do a little like that. The arm is already extended, so this little push is done because these fingers, as these fingers go forward, it's shortening my draw. So, to compensate, the hand goes forward at the same time. So, it looks like a little ch. And I call it the English catra because the arrow is on the left side, so the bow goes a little forward and down. Boom. But it just drops out of the way, and off goes the arrow. Okay? So, that's what I'm uh, uh, doing. Giving just the, the slightest little push at the end. And it's not a deliberate push that makes you shake, it's just pressure. Okay, and you know, you'll get a few hits. Okay, we'll be back in a minute. Okay guys, take a couple more shots here. What's the big deal? You know? Turn your head so that the you get double vision. Is that the big deal? That's a big deal. Uh, the things that I'm doing, anybody can do. Basically, I'm turning my head to the left so I see double vision. That's split vision. If you turn your head far enough to the left, you will see double vision. Vision from this eye, vision from this eye. It overlaps. You want to get, I aim with my left eye now. I get it so that it's on. Because I know, and I've told you this before, if I close this, if I aim at the target and I close this eye, you see how my dominant eye is pointing right at it? So that's what you got to do. So that's one thing. The other thing is, when you put it up, you're going to have a spot where on your knuckle, on the top of your hand or the side of your hand someplace, that when you're looking at the target, the arrow is parallel to it. That means it's going to go straight because the arrow is not under your eye. It's over here because your hand puts the arrow over here. Okay, so that's another thing. The other thing is you need an exact anchor to do this particular style. Mine is right here where my lower back tooth would be or where my jaw curves, right there. And I don't mean an eighth of an inch above or an eighth, an, uh, an eighth of an inch below. I mean there. When you get that and you get the arrow parallel, you get your arm relaxed, you've got a very good chance of hitting the target. Now that's all there is to it and it's up to you to practice it. And uh, once again, You know, you can get some nice shots, okay? Anyhow, think it over. We'll be back in a minute. Okay, guys. 
Uh, a guy named, uh, I think it was Stan Cohen, was sending me a message, you know, and he was saying that he's starting and he wants to put marks on his bull. There's no point in putting marks on your bow if you don't know how to shoot anyhow. You know, like you don't have proper form. Uh, the first thing you want to do is put marks on your bow, but you're not doing anything else regular probably, so it's not going to help. Yeah, marks on your bow, marks on your string, marks on your glove. You can use these things for reference, but, but don't mark them up. You know, if you're going to mark things up, um, why not just go get a sight, you know? So, I would say, and, and it's not an unnatural thing, I've seen people do it. Matter of fact, I can remember the first week I was shooting, taking a little piece of tape and putting it on the side of my bow. So it's not like I've never tried things like that, but <laughs> it's not going to help, you know? Uh, just go get a sight if you want, that kind of thing. Uh, in the end, you're going to have to learn proper form. And uh, if you want to shoot a bow like this, and of course if you do, and you practice for three or four thousand years, you'll get so that you only miss the target by a little bit. <laughs> okay guys, back in a minute. Well guys, you know, my first wife died just recently and even though we hadn't lived together for some time she lived in my house I have my own apartment and we got along fine we never ever did really fight we just didn't live together any longer we have a son 38 anyhow it made me cry and uh I came to the realization that upon death, all things are forgiven. All things are forgiven upon death. It's unfortunate that we're not wise enough to realize that before. <laughs> Just a little thought for you. Back in a minute. Okay, boys, remember when they're coming over the hill at you? Remember your relaxation and your breathing. Stay calm. That will do. Stay calm. Breathe in slowly. Let your stomach fill up and relax. And then pause so that you don't panic. You're not going to suffocate. Now breathe out slowly and just say calm. It will still the waters of terror. When you stay calm, my friends, you'll get your hits when they come over the hill. <laughs> Okay, my boys, back in a minute. Okay, guys. Okay, so, you know, doing this with the little catra, I think you could see that little punch, punch, punch. You can shoot fairly quickly, and uh, everything goes pretty good. And uh, you get so that you're not, you know, missing too many shots. And that little punch is really important, really important. But uh, if you do that, you know, you can 
shoot fairly quickly and get some real good hits. And that's about all I got to show you, you know. Okay. You guys have some fun. Talk to you later. Oh, my friends. The sun goes down at 6.32 tonight. Good enough. Sun's going down at 6.32. Time waits for no man. Isn't that right, Richard? <laughs> Time waits for no man. Anyhow, the big deal that I really have been telling you is simply that that arrow is going to be sitting there. And there is some spot along here so that you're going to be holding your hand to the right. The arrow's to the right. Both eyes, double vision, exact spot. Relax that arm. And uh, that's what happens. Anyhow, I think I'm going to uh, take off. And I'm getting a lot of, uh, you know, one-shot wonders. Bang, in the center, bang, in the center, you know. So, listen to what I'm saying. Think about it. Act out what I'm saying. Don't just read it or look at me. Act it out. And you'll start to catch on to this indirect aiming. We're not aiming the arrow. Anyhow, you guys, have fun. And I'll talk to you later. Bye now.